Tesla's big event on 1010 was out of this world. A lot of things were very far-fetched, but it was a lot of fun being there in person. I'm gonna go through the event from front to finish and cover all of the things that were launched on that day, including my own experiences. So one thing that's been really awesome is that I have had a lot of interaction with some of the Tesla engineers and they were super secretive about what's about to happen here. But it sounds like they are going to be revealing some things that nobody can even predict that's coming. So I can't wait to see what that is. Big reveals coming up. And I think we're going to actually have the chance to ride inside of a cyber, I don't know what you're going to call it, a cyber cab or a robo taxi, whatever it is, we're going to get a chance to ride inside of it and the reason why I say that is because there have been a number of different signs stating that you cannot bring food into the vehicles can't wait to test that out now I don't know how they're gonna get the people inside of these robo taxis to circle around the place maybe and this is a big prediction here maybe we're going to have the humanoid robot driving these robo taxis. I really think that could be a possibility here. Can't wait to see that. That'd be awesome. Wouldn't that be awesome to see a, awesome. a robot driving the car? That would be insane. And then it would have its own camera, so you'd have like an, a remote operator, maybe for the first release. Yeah, an robot that can open the door. That would be so your cool. baggage in the car. <laughs> Because if you think about it, you have a lot of situations where you have gated communities and the RoboTaxi would have to get into those gated communities. It would have to push a button or pull a ticket. Think of the parking garages where you have to park your car. You have to pull a ticket out. And I would imagine they have been planning and prepping for that. Can't wait to see how they're going to do that. Like I said, behind me, we have the curtain and that's gonna be a big reveal. I'm not moving. I was about to go all the way up to the front to get a nice view of the stage, but it seems like we're gonna be delayed for a little bit longer here. And then the biggest reveal of the evening was the cyber cab. We are told that this will ship for under $30,000 with Elon's promises we never know what to expect. And we're also told that this will come out before 2027. I am extremely skeptical of that, but I do fully believe that this will be launched with unsupervised full self-driving. The cars that were driving around were using full self-driving version 13 from my understanding there is a front camera on these cars the layout of all the other cameras is identical to all the other tesla cars and that is consistent i talked to an engineer who said that that allows them to keep the same full self-driving software this vehicle is going to be as efficient as possible we're talking about 5.5 miles per kilowatt hour versus the three to four today. It comes with a 22 inch, almost 22 inch screen in the front. And essentially you just get in the car and the minute, the way it works today is the minute you buckle your seatbelt, those gull wing doors, they come down and lock in place and then you take off. There's really nothing else you do. There are some controls for the windows near the cup holders in the car. But other than that, you just sit there and allow the car to do everything. I imagine you would use your voice to dial in the destination and then it would park itself it would charge itself it does everything all on its own which i think is really really awesome what, 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 what happens if you need a vehicle that uh, is bigger than a model y i love how he said it's larger than a model y well no Sherlock. It's definitely larger than a Model Y. It's larger than a Cybertruck. This is the Robo Van. This holds up to 14 people and it's intended for cargo and sports teams and sending people all over the place. And this thing is massive. Now, apparently this is going to be autonomous as well. There's no steering wheel. There's no nothing. When we are actually going to see this, I have no idea, but it has all the same camera suite as all the other cars. The remainder of this is going to be focused on Optimus we had I well I had a front row seat here to see a dance when they first opened up the curtain here this was kind of in the middle of the audience now there was a lot of speculation during the event whether or not these robots were operating autonomously and I think the rumor is out right now that they were not operating autonomously that there were some teleoperators involved so I decided to ask a lot of questions and test things out while I was at the event. And you'll see me kind of interacting with one right here. And then I go on to kind of film other areas. I spent a lot of time kind of fascinated with the Optimus robots. Can you wave? Can 
you wave? Hello. Hi. <laughs> These awesome. Optimus robots were being controlled remotely. And you'll see kind of clues of that here. The gentleman on the right side of this humanoid robot ends up talking to Optimus at one point, and that's because the robot has a microphone, so it can recognize and hear everything around it. Is there a, is there like a microphone? Can they hear us? Yeah, I, I think he's probably uh, being a little quiet at the moment. A little, little bit? This one, now I it's talking? Talk okay, to. okay. And then there are remote operators that are speaking on behalf of these robots, especially you'll see that when they are serving drinks and they're serving different foods there's a human speaking for those robots. And then what I also found out was that these robots were not only being uh, controlled over voice, but they were also being controlled with their arms and everything was being kind of communicated remotely. So basically if somebody moved their right hand, the robot would move their right hand. Nothing seemed to have been programmed, uh, which was a little bit disappointing. However, the big takeaway here is the dexterity of these robots. They are very, very versatile, and it looks like they've made a lot of improvements with the hands. This one looks nervous. I think it's uh, a little antisocial, a little bit, little bit introverted. <laughs> and also just general stability with the movement. If you remember when the Optimus was first announced, it was actually a human dancing on stage. And then we had kind of a really awkward uh, movement when it was walking. Uh, these have come a long way. Now, is it Boston Dynamics ready to go, like perfectly balanced where you can kick it and it will get back, get right back up? No. <laughs> but keep in mind that these robots are going to be on the order of $30,000 when they eventually come out. So Tesla's keeping that in mind. And with that said, I think they're really incorporating a lot of kind of lower cost components and they're innovating from the ground up on all of this. So just because it can't do everything today does not mean it won't be able to do that in the future. So while there's a lot of people that are very disappointed in the performance or the presentation here, I'm not going to give up hope just yet. Just like the rest of you, I think it would be really, really great to have these inside of your house to help you do laundry, to do dishes, to cook, all of those mundane tasks. It would be really great to have an assistant. It's a mocktail bar, it looks like. I'd love to have, by the way. I would love to, but I'm not. I'm not Hello, how are you doing? Hello, I'm doing good. How are you doing? Good, good. I was curious, can you pick this stuff up with your pinky? Like pick it up with your pinky. Do you want to bid on 100 bucks? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, two All at right. a time. Two at, two at a time with both your pinkies. 100 bucks. Done. Okay. All right, let's go, let's go. Here. Right here. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Oh. <laughs> you got it. You got it. Oh, thank you. No problem. Well deserved. Well deserved. Where are you going to well, put you it? Can have it. You can put have it in your pocket. It. Put it in your pocket. I you want you to have it. it. It's a tip. Put it, put it in your, yeah, You can tip. have it. I won, but I'm gonna give it back. So are you being remote controlled? How's your night going, sir? Good. I said, are you being remote controlled? Today, I'm yes. assisted by a human. I'm not yet fully autonomous. Thank you. Here you go, sir. Got it. So apparently there is a coffin over here. I heard there's a coffin. There is, it's over there and somewhere. I heard that's the that's the spot to go. Ah. So apparently that's the VIP section over there and they're not letting anyone in. I'm gonna try to sneak over here. Let's see if I can get in. Somehow I got over here. And here's the coffin.
so I got booted from the VIP area, but I heard that's the Gen 2.2 hand. It's all new actuators. It's the next gen and it has 22 degrees of freedom. That is a big deal. Nobody is innovating to that level that I have seen. There are a couple other humanoid robot manufacturers out there, but this is next level stuff from Tesla that we're seeing here today. During the event, the lines were extremely long to jump in a cyber cab. The staff was encouraging people to take a ride in a Model Y instead, which was running the exact same software. The only difference is that it had a steering wheel. Now, most people already have a Model Y or a Model 3 or Model S, or a Cybertruck that has FSD, although it's not FSD version 13, they can experience the same sort of thing by jumping in the back seat or in the passenger seat and then operating the actually smart summon by hitting the go to target button. So most people were opting not to take that ride and just continuing to wait in those lines. Now the question was asked to Elon Musk whether Hardware 3 will be able to support RoboTaxi Network and he didn't go into the details. However, Franz and Lars did address this to Kim Java when she asked the question on site. What about like some of the older vehicles? Like, are, would they be? Are you had that here by wire? Hardware in for years and years and years of building up the redundancy since like 2014 when we first announced it. So what about like I have a 2018 Model 3, one of the early build Model 3s. What would that need to be like? Are you using right? FSD are you now? It has, it, has, it has hardware 3 in it. Yeah. Would you yeah. still be able to use that? It's good to go. It's good to go. Yeah. Even with hardware 3. Yeah. That is insane. Overall, this event felt very futuristic and my mind was racing for many days afterwards. And I will say that this is definitely years and years away before we see any of these come to fruition, but the future does look extremely exciting. And if I were to bet on any one company succeeding in any of these areas, it would be Tesla just because of all of the data that they've been collecting and the history that they've laid forward already. Tesla is definitely ahead of the game and I'm a huge believer. If you watch all of my previous videos, you'll see me testing full self driving in downtown Chicago in extreme conditions where I put it to the ultimate test and it does extremely well. I will continue to test it here in Chicago. So stay tuned for more videos coming up specifically related to FSD as well as a video very soon on how I film inside of my car so that you may, if you're interested, follow along and do the same type of thing with your car. I think the future is going to be very bright and I really look forward to the day when my uh, Model 3, which is a 2019 model, will skyrocket in value because it will be able to drive itself. Thanks for watching. Until next time, have a great day.